Welcome to Metaphysical Soul Speak. I'm your host, Elena Fox Starks. Hey guys, I hope you're doing really well in this moment in time. And that whenever, wherever you happen to be on the timeline right now, no matter what dimension you're in, no matter what parallel universe you happen to be in when you're listening to this recording, Maybe you're on the same exact one as me, and maybe you're hearing a version of me somewhere. (laughs) But no matter whenever and wherever you happen to be, I hope that you are able to accept the field of all possibilities, and especially the possibility of the one where it all works out. (laughs) To paraphrase the uh, title of each and every single one of the Friends episodes ever. (laughs) I've been thinking about this energy of what happens when it all works out. Everything is as it should be in the end. What if you embraced that from the beginning and you stopped all of your anxiety, worry, and panic about it not working out? Because hasn't it always worked out anyway, one way or another? You know, we talked a little bit about this yesterday and over the past few days about how sometimes the universe helps you decide for you or things don't work out and sometimes it takes you years to see it and then you go, oh my gosh, I'm so glad that didn't happen. I'm glad I didn't stay married to that person or I'm glad that... I did lose that job because, you know, the better thing came along later. That was pretty cool. Things always work out every single freaking time. And look at all the times that you've spent in anxious hurriedness or when you've snapped at the people around you and you've been angry at the people around you because you didn't know if it was going to work out or not. And you're scared it wouldn't. And even when it doesn't work out for a while, it always works out, even after that. You know, um, I've had conversations with a few of you over the past year and a half. And uh, I'm not going to name names or whatever, tell your story, but because it's not mine to tell. But a couple of you have expressed that in your lifetime, you've had issues with businesses that were amazing and then all of a sudden suddenly didn't work out or jobs that suddenly didn't work out and you didn't know what you were going to do like maybe maybe you were going to start a new career or live in a different state or suddenly your relationships fell apart you know um, or suddenly you started a new relationship a couple of you in the past year have went from being completely single AF to being with suddenly the one and all MG. How did that work out for you? Amazing. I'm so happy for you guys. And some of you have talked to me about being homeless, that you've struggled with this holding on to a place to live. But yet in other areas of your life, things are working out. Like you have your best friends every single day. You see them or talk to them or know that you are loved completely, you know? So you realize that the homelessness, maybe it's about you loving yourself or maybe it's just that the universe is kind of 
helping you to become a stronger person. It's happened to me several times in my in my past. It's not going to happen again. I'm pretty sure it's not. I'm doing muscle testing real quick. God, is it going to happen to me again? No. It's. It, I'm going to be fine. Thank you, God. Um. It's. It's just one of those things, you know. Like sometimes things don't work out. And then you focus on that, like, oh, God, in the past it didn't work out, and maybe it's not going to work out in the future. And then you get really so so scared, so, so scared. But then it always works out. Then you're like, oh, well, worked out now. It's fine. That's cool. (laughs) It's weird. I mean, I had a time, you know, with my kids when we were living in our car, but... It wasn't for lack of money, and that was what's so weird is that we had money. We just couldn't find a place to live. So it's like if you were meant to be homeless, you're going to be homeless whether you have money or you don't. It's so insane. You know, even movie stars that are very uh, rich and very famous. Last year, and I don't know if it's happening right now, but last year during the fires, a lot of wealthy people, very famous wealthy people, uh, lost at least temporarily their place to live because of the fires. They had to be evacuated. You know, the, if the universe needs you to learn a lesson in humility or in building up your inner character and your strength or, you know, whatever. I mean, there's a, a bunch of different reasons why a person suddenly is without a home, whether it's for the day, the week, the month, or the year, right? There's always reasons for it. It's in the field of all possibilities. Like, there's a reason why these things happen. There's a reason why the things don't work out. And there's a reason why you have to go through whatever it is that you go through. And, you know, I've been realizing, too, that sometimes some of the weirder things that you have to go through, uh, you have to because your future person, whether it's your soulmate or your twin flame, but your future person, maybe it's your business partner, your future best friend, they had to go through something similar. And the only way that you're going to relate to each other is if you both have this one hard thing or this series of hard things that were very similar. And that's going to help you to bond. It's like so strange. But some of the weirdest things that you have to go through in the future, you know, it, it's so that um, it will help you in your future. So the weirder things in your past will help you in your future. You know, I was a security guard for like a couple years while I was putting myself through uh, college. It was my job for a couple years until I got into tutoring. And now that I know what I know about security, I know in the future I'm going to have a very secure place because I know how to like look at my situation from the eyes of a criminal mind and also from a security standpoint. It's kind of weird. It's a really weird skill to have, especially when at the time I was like, you know, I'm only five foot one. I'm not a very tall person. And at the time I was very skinny. I was like a size three. I was just a little waif of a person. And I was taking karate and self-defense at that time because I was a little waif of a person (laughs) and my boyfriend at the time insisted that I learned uh, martial arts so that I could defend myself in the event that one day he's not there with me anymore what if something happened to him he wants to make sure I'm safe all right fine all right fine I'll learn how to kill someone just in case, just to appease your fear, my future. (laughs) Okay. So funny because when I moved to Krav Maga, I mean, when I moved to, I mean, when I moved to Detroit, I got, I, I bought a course in Krav Maga, a video course for my kids and I to learn just in case you never know. Cause even if you have a weapon, you know, Hey, You might not always be able to reach for that weapon in time. You need to know hand-to-hand combat, especially when you live in the murder capital of the United States, which we did for a minute. Now, Then I think it ended up being Chicago, and now I think it's like Philly or some other city. But for a minute, you know, when we lived there, Detroit was number one. Yay. 
in something, which murders. But anyway, <laughs> and thank you, God, that's not where they're at now. But that was, um, it was like one of those weird things. It like It's like he gave me that sense of urgency of having to learn how to defend myself. And then in the future, fast forward 20 something years and here I'm doing the same thing for my kids and maybe maybe these skills gave them confidence as well as the ability to defend themselves possibly I don't know but I know for a fact that when I made sure that they learned it and I learned it I had confidence and I was almost robbed in Lima Peru and these guys came up and they walked behind me and then they walked to the side of me and their arms were touching my arms as we were walking down the street. And because I had learned those Krav Maga moves, I knew I was going to be okay. I was just waiting for them to pull a knife or something on me so that I could really hurt them. It was like so strange. I don't want to hurt anyone. I don't want to kill anyone. I don't want to ever hurt anyone. But I remember those moments of, well, my whole life led me up to this moment where these knuckleheads are trying to intimidate me. And I had this image of stepping back and knocking their heads together. And then I had an image of Gilligan on Gilligan's Island, another thing that was in my past. And it made me laugh. I had chuckled out loud. I started, I burst out laughing at that thought of that sound of coconuts. All I could think of was coconuts. And I thought of knocking their heads together, like stepping back and knocking their heads together when they go to pull a knife on me. Such a weird thought. And that weird thought made me laugh and laugh and laugh. And it scared the shit out of them. And they realized they might be in over their heads with me. And here I'm a 50 year old woman walking down the street with combat boots. And I'm walking like kind of tough, like a man, my, my city walk, I call it, which is hilarious because normally I don't walk like that. But when I was walking in a rougher neighborhood, I would act kind of tough, like stuff I learned in the hood in Detroit, stuff I learned in LA in the hood. Right. And it was like one of the weirdest things, like one of the weirdest skills to have is to have that street smart confidence, even if you're freaking out inside. Right. So it was like one of those okay, well, my whole life led me up to this moment. It's an insane thing. And all my past weird knowledge came, came to light in that moment. And then the image of Gilligan on Gilligan's Island, cracking coconuts together and making that sort of sound. And it made me laugh and it made them run away from me. And then as they started to run away from me, I saw the tattoo on one of the guys' necks. And I started telling him in Spanish, hey, I like your tattoo. And I started describing it. And they started running as fast as they could. And I'm like, are you afraid? Come back. Let's play. Let's play in front of the police station. And they started running as fast as they could. And we were like half a block from the police station. And they left as fast as they could, running so fast away from me. And all I did was laugh. <laughs> I mean, if you can laugh out of nowhere in a dangerous situation, it makes the other person think they might have a weapon. They might be excited about hurting me or like maybe I'm in over my head. Like it makes them crazy because they expect you to be scared. Like, oh no, oh no, damsel in distress, whatever shall I do? And then they go, ha ha, I could take their money because I got them, right? And they didn't get me. They didn't win that game. They didn't win that round with me, right? And right after, like a week later, um, my oldest went to a restaurant. She said, I'm going to take a walk, Mom. She takes a walk. And can I have some money if I want to eat? Sure. Went to a restaurant and saw this person's, um, the person who tried to rob me, was waiting tables in his mom's restaurant. And his mom was screaming at him. And my daughter just looked looked into his eyes and said, huh, interesting. This is where you work. Maybe I should get to know your mom. (laughs) He was so embarrassed. And you know what? He never tried. He had tried to rob her a year before and never once tried to rob us again. And it was one of those, well, you know, if you rob me, I'm going to go talk to your mom and get my money back, get my stuff back. And you're going to be in trouble. And it was just that look. And it was like, all right, there you go. Now we know, you know, Hey, 
And it was like one of those weird things, like the life will set you up in the weirdest situations that you will take care of later by having that knowledge, right? So sometimes you need to be homeless. Sometimes you need to be broken up and have your heart broken so that your heart will become stronger. You know, um, if you have um, a vase, the light can't get in that vase, but when that vase cracks open, then the light comes in, right? Your heart is the same thing. You know, it's, or it's, it's the same way, like a vase. You crack open a vase and that light's going to come in. And then when you repair it, it's stronger. You know, the vase is just a vase, but now when the, when the vase has super glue holding it together, super glue is stronger, right? So the light comes in, now you have the super glue. <laughs> it's all a big fat metaphor, but you guys get the point. Like everything that leads up until this point in your life, all the bad stuff, what you thought was the bad stuff, when you look back, it's like, damn, I came out of that so much stronger, so much more intelligent, so much wiser. I have a sense of humor about life and love and happiness. I'm so much better than I was. And all the things in my life, all the weird, odd jobs I had came in handy later. It came in handy later. This is so strange. You know, like maybe you had a filing job one summer that was crappy and you never considered that that would ever be important in your life. And now in your future, you own a business and now you have to file things. Now you know what system works and what system doesn't. You know how to do things. You know the equipment you need and the kind of filing cabinets you need. And you also know to appreciate the filing person who's going to help you in your business because filing is one of the shittiest jobs you can have. I did it. I had, I had a couple different filing jobs. And I will never treat people who do a job like that crappy. I would never treat someone like that or who has that job like that um, bad again because not, not that I treated filers, filing, filing clerks. I never treat those people, those people, who was me. I, I was those people. <laughs> I was never um, mean to, you know, a filer, filing clerk before, but I never in the future will be because I appreciate that job because it's hard. It's literally black, back-breaking labor. It doesn't seem like it would be, but you have to carry all these paper files. It's like carrying a damn log. You know, and you carry it so much and you... Um, file and climbing up and down ladders. That's what I did all day long for eight hours a day for weeks and weeks on end. Filing and filing and filing and filing and holy crap. You know how many times I had to say the alphabet just to figure out what goes where? Oh my God. And I did A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Like singing the song. Like, And I remember after having this job for you know, and, and I did a lot of odd jobs like that, just strange jobs. And I remember going to this woman's house one day and she had these cats. I'm like, what are your cats names? And oh, this one's Max short for Maximilian. And then this cat is Elemenope. I'm like, oh, that's a Greek name, isn't it? She's like, no, I worked as a filing clerk. I'm like, oh my God, I did that job too. That sucks so bad. She said, that's how I came up with the name. I'm like, but I don't get it. That's like a Greek name. She's like, no, Elemenope. I'm like, what? L-M-N-O-P, you know, Q-R-S-T-U-P. I was like, oh my God, that's hilarious. And she's like, yeah, I had to have the filing job to come up with a clever name that sounds like a Greek name. Everyone says the same thing. Oh, what? I don't remember reading that story. That's one of the ancient Greek names, right? <laughs> Like Penelope, Elemenope, I mean, it was like Calliope, Cassiopeia. I mean, it seems like a Greek name, but it was just, it was like one of those moments where, and I had a bonding moment with this person over being a stupid filing clerk, right? Just, I mean, not filing clerks aren't stupid, but it was a stupid job. I hated the job, but it was necessary. It's one of those low level jobs. They don't pay you very much, but it's one of those necessary jobs and because it was so much um, work, I always got overtime. So I ended up making a lot and saving a lot. And it helped me pay for my education, you know, like helped me pay for my 
my uh, life as a college student. So I had a lot of weird, odd jobs like that. And they all led me to, you know, the security jobs helped me to be safe. The filing clerk job helped me to bond to somebody. Um, all my jobs led up to something. My, um, I had a telephone job where I sold the newspaper and I was so bored with the job. I would make up characters. I was always making up characters, you know, which I don't think it's right for me to do it now. And I mean, like looking back, I'm like, it was maybe a little bit wrong, but like I, I told one man that I was a, a six foot four black woman from Jamaica and that I was just trying to make enough money so that I could pay for my visa and I want to be a citizen. And I had the accent down. Oh, my God. And he believed me. And he said, okay, I'll help you and I'll buy the paper. It was terrible of me. And I was a terrible person in a lot of ways when I was younger. And now I'm a better person. Thank God. But I learned through my experiences, right? <laughs> but I was bored as hell. But but because of that, it helped me to develop my imagination. And I'm a writer. And it helped me to be imaginative, right? And um, it also helped me to have compassion for the characters I made up. Like maybe somewhere in the world there is a Jamaican lady struggling to um, get her green card and, and become a citizen in the United States. And maybe she is super tall, maybe. And I mean, in, in my character that I made up, she was like this woman who was having a hard time finding a man because she's so tall and she's so strong. She's a wonderful woman and, and she, but people think of her as tough because she's so big and she has muscular arms. Cause you know, in, in my real life here, I'm a short woman who's, um, not able to, like I was hitting the gym all the time and still, I swear to God, I was born without shoulder muscles. I couldn't develop my shoulder muscles without taking, um, uh, steroids. And I refused to do that. I never, ever once took steroids. And I really, wanted I had I had a girlfriend who took steroids and she had perfect shoulder muscles I'm like oh man then I met another woman I'm like where are all these women with these gorgeous shoulder muscles I have found out the secret they all took steroids and they ruined their bodies and they had other health issues as a result one of my friends had uh, ruined her kidneys and um, she was in the hospital for months for doing steroids and I, and I was at the gym a lot and I learned that my body was never going to do what I wanted it to do to look like these other beautiful women that were in perfect shape with these awesome hardcore shoulder muscles. And I learned it's because they took these hormones that the steroids that made them look like that. And then I, because I went through all of that, I learned to appreciate my feminine shoulders and my body because I wasn't going to put myself through that kind of, um, th that, those kind of problems. Right. But I met a lot of people who did steroids and I started to have love and compassion for the people who didn't think they were good enough because their bodies weren't perfect. So they had to alter their bodies, taking these really harsh steroids that can really hurt you. And I saw a lot of people that get, they got hurt. You know, men that ended up with, with boobs that looked like women's boobs because they did the steroids too much. They had awesome muscles and also boobs, <laughs> you know, and it gave me love and compassion for them because I knew that I had that issue with my shoulders and we all have something in our bodies that we don't like. Maybe we have perfect bodies, but we have acne or maybe, you know, we have perfect skin and perfect bodies, but our hair is falling out or hair is growing in places it's not supposed to and not growing in places you want it to. You know, everybody has something, right? So all the weird little interactions I had with people, I started to realize the, the compassionate stuff about, um, I mean, I just learned to be compassionate for people when I realized, well, I have things I don't like. And then I talked to other people and they said, well, I don't like this thing about myself. And it's like, wow, they could admit it. I could never admit it. I mean, I used to be a very tight um, tight ass person, I guess, close minded, tight ass, judgmental. When I was 17, 18, 19, I don't think I was a very good person. Of course, at the time I thought I was a perfect person, which is stupid, but I mean, 
you know, that was just who I was back then. Now I know, now I can admit it because I've been through life. I've gone through some things. Now I could say, well, yeah, you know, I didn't like these things about myself, but now I love myself regardless, you know? I was talking to somebody the other day and she was saying, have you ever done the mirror exercise? I mentioned this a few weeks ago and it's like, yeah. You know, I thought of something else, <laughs> you know, and then she's like, no, I mean, standing in front of a mirror, just loving every part of your body. And I had forgotten that exercise and I knew about this exercise. I forgot about it. And now I could honestly say I've done the mirror exercise a few times in the past two weeks. It's like, yeah, I love my body. I love myself. Even if, um, it's not where I want it to be or completely perfect or whatnot, it's, I know I'm going to be where I want to be soon, you know, and every place that you've ever been in your life, every experience you've ever been, you've ever had in your life, every weird ass job you've ever had in your life, it's brought you to where you are now. Woody Harrelson was homeless. Look at him now. Brad Pitt was a giant slice of pizza or something. That's why I think, in fact, I met somebody, I mean, I had a friend who met him when he was a giant slice of pizza on the sidewalk, you know, advertising. I think it was that or dressed like a chicken or something. He was dressed as something (laughs) to, to advertise food and he was dressed as the food. Oh my God. So embarrassing. But that led him to being an actor. I mean... If you can act like a piece of pizza (laughs) and dance around twirling a sign or whatever, and that led to greater things, right? Everything that you've had in your life, you know, if you're a waitress, maybe you're now, maybe you're a restaurateur, maybe you own a restaurant now and it all led you up to that point, you know, maybe you, uh, like to take pictures you know, cause you're bored. Now you're a photographer and you're famous, right? Or maybe in your future, that's what you're going to be. Maybe you'll take a, a picture that becomes famous. And now that's what bought you your house or whatever, you know, like you never know where you're going to be. So when you open your mind to the whole field of possibilities and you look at where you've been and love where you've been, because it's going to lead to your future, obviously it can't not lead to your future. So bring yourself to a situation in your mind where you accept everything you've done, everything you've been. Not one thing was a waste of time. Not one thing ever was a waste of time in your life. Did you know that? All those times I was a file clerk, I, a couple different jobs I had as a file clerk. Oh my God. I worked for one, it was a temporary job, it was like a six week job, and it was a merger between two um, health insurance companies. I mean, my God, so boring, right? And I had to help merger the files of all the patients that had ever been in the hospital for one company and all the patients that ever had been in the hospital for another company and I had to be responsible and in charge. I was like a file clerk manager, but a temporary manager. It was like for six weeks, maybe it was eight weeks. It was like maybe two months. One of the most boring, horrible jobs I ever had. I mean, I came home with so many paper cuts, you know, it was just like, Oh my God. But I think maybe in some ways it helped me to have a more, very Virgo anyway, but it helped me to have patience and a more organized mind, helped me to bond with this friend of mine in the future. After she'd had the file clerk job and after I had the file clerk job, it kind of worked out. And that led to a friendship with somebody else, which led me to a friendship with somebody else, which led me to... um, Uh, a a short-term relationship I had that helped me learn insights into myself and other people. And then that led me to something else beyond that. And, and it all started with a stupid file clerk job, right? 
And it was like, if you look at this string in the series of events, how everything happens in your life, one thing leads to another, leads to another, leads to another, and eventually leads you to your one true love, leads you to your your best career move, leads to um, gain a, a better education, leads to living in a better neighborhood, leads to traveling around the world, <laughs> leads to knowing how to fight in a, in a situation in a strange city, or whatever it is. Everything leads to something else, right? And once you realize that, and you open your mind and your heart to the field of all possibilities, then eventually you're going to know that in the end, everything works out anyway. Every millionaire who owns a mansion knows that they came from nothing usually. You know, nine times out of ten, they come from nothing because... Usually the people who know nothing, they don't know how to work, they don't know how to run a business, they've never had a struggle, and they're born with that silver spoon in their mouth and their billions of dollars in the bank, usually lose it. Usually they don't know what the hell to do with it. They don't appreciate it, and they lose it. Now I've met a couple people in my lifetime who said, you know, I was born with a silver spoon in my mouth. It took me 20 years to take the damn thing out of my mouth. And then I ended up going through all these horrible situations and learning that I never should have taken the damn silver spoon out of my mouth, meaning I shouldn't never have rejected my parents and their money. Because then I, you know, it took me 20 years to get it out, 20 more years to, to put my own silver spoon in my mouth. Like, you know, I've had a few people tell me the same exact scenario. It's like, damn, I was born rich. And my, with my parents' money, and I rejected them in their ways, became a hippie or whatever, and then I spent another 20 years trying to not struggle and, and to get that money again and build it up for myself. And people who are born with it, they, they, they don't appreciate it. People who are born without it want it and are jealous of the people that were born with it. It's, like, so funny, like, you know, those of us with straight hair wish we had curly hair those of us with curly hair wish we had straight hair we always want the opposite thing it's so stupid but it is what it is you know so if you open yourself up to the field of possibilities you're always gonna know that it's gonna work out so why don't you vibe with that work at working out it's gonna work out it's always gonna work out and one way that I have learned is to forward myself fast forward myself into the life where it does work out and vibe with that vibration dance to that tune you know I've been struggling um, with this uh, TESOL certification course I've been taking and every day I've been like oh I've got to get through it I've got to get through it I've got to get through it and today this order that I had ordered from Wish a lot of the stuff showed up my vitamins showed up to Florida and I had this USA valet um, that's the name of the company Um, they went and they got my stuff along with literally 1,000 pounds worth of stuff for all the expatriates living here in Ecuador 1,000 pounds I'm like Art how the hell did you get 1,000 pounds worth of stuff on an airplane when me as a mere citizen going on a plane can't have over like what 30 pounds or something like how the hell did you do it he said well trade secrets my dear and I did it one pound at a time oh my god I can't even imagine that but anyway my um, first part of my shipment arrived today and they said it's gonna we're gonna start delivering at 8 in the morning and we're going to go through 8 o'clock in the evening Friday you know, so from eight in the morning to eight at night, two days in a row, and we're hoping we're gonna get it done in forty-eight hours. And I'm like, oh my god, Art called me directly because he wants me to um, talk about my experience of ordering stuff from China, and he wants me to write articles. He's probably gonna pay me, maybe he will, I don't know. But he said I could advertise my show 
you know, and I'm the host of this show and these are the things I needed and yada, yada, yada. I'm like, all right, fine. I'll write the articles and it sounds awesome because he wants to expand his business. And one way you expand a website is to have a blog. So I've been asked to write the blog. Awesome. Awesome. So, so I uh, got my first shipment today at eight o'clock in the morning, which means the guy wrote me at 7.45 in the morning. I went to bed at 4.45 in the morning. <laughs> so I'm, I'm operating now in this moment on three hours of sleep. And I've been up all day. But my I was so excited about getting this stuff. My son's like, oh my God, it's like Christmas morning. I'm like, oh my God, it's so fun. So he woke up to the sound of me opening the door and the dog blowing into the house. And I had to get the dog out. <laughs> and then the guy showing up and, and bringing the stuff and then the sound of me spraying everything down with alcohol that's how my son woke up this morning was, was with these sounds normally I'm the sound he wakes up to is probably me snoring <laughs> in my bed because oh my god I'm a loud sleeper and I have I have a couple snoring solutions I plan for my next wish order I'm going to buy the snoring solutions from China <laughs> but um we sat here all day trying to figure out this projector I bought. I thought it was going to be like at least eight or nine inches across. The thing will fit in the palm of my hand. It's so freaking small. It would literally fit on top of my coaster and barely cover my coaster that just where I put my coffee cup. Crazy. It was so tiny. My son's like, I hate this thing. I hate this thing. I'm like, do you understand that when I was growing up as a kid in grade school, like projectors were the, all the rage and look how tiny it is in my day projectors were enormous I expected something half the size of my childhood and this thing is tiny and he's like oh my gosh you know he's so annoyed with it but we ended up hanging a sheet up in our third bedroom and using the projector and we were laughing because we're like you know maybe there's a neighbor somewhere up on the hill looking down going I'm so jealous of these people having these big screen, this big screen TV. Look how enormous this thing is, like five feet across. And we're laughing because the projector is so teeny tiny. And it looks like we have like a $1,000 TV, but it, we, it's really like a $30 projector. It's, it's hysterically funny. I'm like, can you imagine like in a movie, you know, the scenario of the guys busting into someone's house to take down their massive TV, these rich jerks, how can they, you know, show off their TV with their window open every night, and we're so jealous, and then they, like, bust into the house, and in, in the wall with the TV is just white poster board, because that's where the projector's projecting the image, and I, we were laughing so hard about this, and we laughed ourselves silly about this idea of, you know, I could write this in a movie, and, you know, my characters in the movie, being so jealous, of it, and then they get to there, they're like, well, damn, my TV's better than that. This is just a stupid little projector. It's like made from plastic. Like, what is this? But we were, but we were like, yeah, this is like Christmas morning. And we opened up our vitamins. And one funny thing that happened today, and this is what's leading me to the topic for tonight, is aromatherapy for anxiety and stress relief. Um... For a couple of weeks now, we've all had that free floating anxiety that's um, basically it's an ascension symptom, actually. So if you're not normally used to anxiety and you're having it, it's more, more than likely it's an ascension symptom, right? And if you're normally having anxiety, now it's worse, right? And what happened today was I, one, I opened up all of my um, Puritan's Pride if you want a decent, really low priced, anything health food, vitamin wise, and you need it delivered, Puritan.com. I'm telling you they're it's, they're incredible, really good company. They're the vitamin company that most vitamin companies turn to and they ask for their vitamins and then they slap their own label on it. Puritan is an excellent company. So, um, anyway, we, uh, Got our vitamins, opened up the bags, opened up, um, I got my Buddha store. I don't know if you've seen the um, Buddha Power Store um, wealth bracelet. 
Uh, oh my God, it's so high quality. I couldn't believe it. You know, I expected it to be kind of cheesy and it was absolutely beautiful. And, um, my, I bought a couple bracelets for myself and only one for my son. Cause he's like, okay, fine. I'll take that one. He was mad at me the day I was like, he's like, you're spending all your money. I'm like, yeah, but it's going to attract more money, right? It's a money bracelet and it's going to help me think positive about my future, right? The best possible outcome. Feel of all, all possibilities. Come on. So, so the, they show up and he's like, oh my God, this bracelet's so beautiful. The citrine wealth bracelet. I'm like, okay, fine. It's yours. Oh my God, mom. It's so great. I'm like, yeah, you have to have it. It's like one of us, we each have to wear a wealth bracelet, right? So all day long, we're wearing our wealth bracelets and feeling super good and super great. And, and, and he's like, it's like the incense from China is so amazing. It must be in the, in the Buddha power store. They must have been burning incense because these bracelets smell so good. And then we realized, and this is hysterically funny, that um, one of the bottles was kind of open for Lang Lang, which is an essential oil, and it had leaked all over everything. All, the whole order had Lang Lang oil on it. And it was hilarious because we're like, oh, that feels so good. That smells so good. And as the day progressed, we were feeling happier. Our mood was elevated. No anxiety, no depression, no scared, uh, scared of the future energy. We were just feeling amazing. And our whole house smelled great. We're like, yeah, it must be the Buddha power story. <laughs> it was the Lang Lang. It was hilarious. We felt amazing. And then, uh, and then we were like, God, I feel a little bit like I microdosed on acid or something. And my son's like, I feel a little bit weird, like, like I'm high or something. I don't know what it is. I'm like, yeah, me too. I feel weird, like altered somehow. But I feel great. We're both like, yeah, we feel great. And then we realized it was the Lang Lang. It was all over everything. But everything was wet because I had sprayed everything down with rubbing alcohol. So the rubbing alcohol made... It, it, it enhanced somehow the Lang Lang <laughs> and now everything is covered with this Lang Lang oil I mean it's going to be like days before my house doesn't smell like this but it was like that, that has led me to going you know what let me do a, a aromatherapy essential oils for anxiety and stress relief I felt like you could all use this information and I always could use refresher courses in essential oils, so there you go. Everything's going to work out for your greatest possible outcome. Know it, believe it. It's definitely coming. It's definitely coming. And I had to bring this up again today because of this anxiety that people have been feeling. And even my son, he was like, I finally feel super, super positive. I'm like, well, it's the positivity bracelet I got you. The Chalcedonian Ruby is Chalcedony and Ruby bracelet I got from the Buddha Power Store. I'm like, this thing is so beautiful. And, and, and it was like, buy one, get one free when I went to order. I'm like, this is awesome. So he got his and I got mine and we were like, yay, twin bracelets, right? You know, we're just so positive this energy is so positive and it was a Lang Lang that increased our mood but we thought it was a bracelet so hilarious but you guys I got let's see four I'm looking at four decks of cards brand new cards and remember how yesterday I was thinking I don't know what I'm going to do when I get down to the wire and I no longer have a, a spiritual lesson in the Course of Miracles to read to you guys but now I do I have four decks of cards. So I'm going to draw a new card every day from either the Literary Witch's Oracle, the Everyday Witch Tarot, the Rebel deck with the, the unicorn on, the, on it, or the Vintage Wisdom Oracle cards. I have all these amazing cards. Now I'm like, you know what? I made the decision that when... I'm out of lessons in ACIM from ACIM.org. I'm going to read, do a, a mini reading of only one card per day. 
it's like, it's like one thing leads to another leads to another and it's all going to work out and it always works out in your favor and in my favor and in everybody's favor because in the end we're all favored by God who created us it's just the way it is boo yeah it's so awesome or who yeah I don't know insert your favorite cheer here yeah (laughs) all right that's so cheesy because I can't cheer right now you know I had a moment today my son said he was gonna go to the store and I gave him some money just the little local store I'm like hey let's have a ramen today we've got all these vegetables we could throw in ramen make it our own so he went and he got the ramen And in the meantime, I played Just Like Heaven, song by The Cure. And I just sat here and danced for two or three minutes. Happy as hell. It was amazing. And I just decided, you know, from this point forward, I'm going to accept nothing but the energy of it's all going to work out. Everything's going to work out. And you should accept nothing less for yourself. Be open to the field of all possibilities. Because the universe always has your back. And no matter the low, 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 lows that you go through, they're going to be met with the high, high, high highs. <laughs> and I don't mean drugs. I just mean the happiness, the joy, the beauty, the love, the money, the abundance, the wealth. Wealth and abundance to me is the love that people have for you and that you have for others. The amount at which you care for others and they care for you. It's not just money. It's everything. The richness of experiences. Wealth, insight. Wealth of insights. Spiritual experiences. It's all wealth to me. It's all abundance. So, there you go. I'm going to hop on over to um, spaceweather.com because there's some interesting things. Today, the solar wind speed is picked up from yesterday. It's 306 kilometers per second and guess what we have not one but two sunspots on the sun facing earth right now 2770 is getting ready to turn around go to the other side of the sun but we have 27071 right there on the lower um, left half of the sun still facing us and uh, so we might have some Solar flares yet? I don't know, but it's possible. Perseid meteor shower update: a hundred meteors per hour have been counted yesterday, and uh, this is the debris stream coming off of Comet Swift Tuttle. So we're going to have continued Perseid meteor showers today as well as tomorrow, although there will be a little bit lessening. As the next few days come, it'll be less and less and less every day. So get out there while you can, or watch a YouTube video of it while you can. It's pretty interesting to watch a meteor shower. And of course, remember what gets to happen when you see a falling star. That's what they call meteors. It's not an actual star, you know, but they they say wish upon a star. Make a wish. So guess what? When with a hundred an hour, holy man, that's unlimited wishes. <laughs> so get out there and make some wishes, guys. All right, um, the neutron counts is high. We are down 1.3 percent from yesterday, and that's according to the Ulu Finland um, counts. So uh, we are at 9.3 percent of the space age average right now. So we are getting bombarded by a little bit of cosmic radiation. So check it out. We haven't had this in a while. Solar wind flowing from the southern coronal hole could brush Earth's magnetic field on the 16th and 17th of August. Now today's the 13th. So that's uh, three days from now. So let's see. Friday, Saturday. So Sunday. It's been hitting us usually on weekends and So Sunday and Monday, we're going to be getting some solar wind as well as the cosmic radiation coming in general. It's 
backwards us. Now this is pretty cool news. Uh, 158 fireballs was seen over the United States. So if it's happening there, it's happening everywhere, right? So this is according to NASA's All Sky Cameras and the All Sky Fireball Network. 158 fireballs. Again, this looks like another, like a peacock feather. The shape, the color of the trajectory of the fireballs. There's so many of them, it looks like a, a feather. It's very strange. But um, 102 of these were Perseids meteor shower, and 56 of them were just sporadic fireballs. That would be a great name for a punk rock band. Sporadic Fireballs, up next. <laughs> It'd be a great name for a punk band. Okay, according to DisclosureNews.it, they had two peaks today uh, on the Schumann Resonance Scale. 77 hertz frequency, followed by 59 hertz frequency. So, that's pretty high. We don't have on HeartMath.org anything new. We are a couple days behind, or a day and a half behind. But at the 2300 hour on Tuesday, August 11th, this is what we had from around the world. California was at 136 hertz frequency. Hofu, Saudi Arabia, as well as Alberta, Canada, were both at zero hertz frequency. And Lithuania was at 164 hertz frequency. And Northland, New Zealand, was at 63 hertz frequency. And last but not least, Hulului, South Africa, was at 105 hertz frequency. Again, this is a Schumann resonance scale. And um, let's see. Normally, that's everything is at 7.83. And in the past couple of years, nothing's been normal. Not even close, not even a little bit. All right, guys, we are reading A Course in Miracles. We are on lesson 355. Oh my God, that means we have 10 left after this. Is that right or nine? Nine or 10 left. Whew, I can't believe we've done this for so many episodes already. 355 episodes we've done this. It just blows my mind. <laughs> it blows my mind. I mean, doing this show for me is second nature. I just, I love doing it. Love being here for you guys as we walk the ascension path together as a group. I like being a leader in this movement, but at the same time, I'm just with you. We're just doing the same thing together. We're all walking on the ascension path together. Some of you are ahead of me on the path. Some of you are a little bit behind me on the path. But we're all going to the same place. It's so amazing. And I'm so glad to have you guys on board. I'm glad to have you as listeners of the show, so thank you in advance. Uh, usually I say this at the end of the show, but I just wanted to thank you now. Sometimes I just feel the urge to say thank you to you now. All right, in A Course in Miracles, which is found at ACIM.org, this is the Foundation for Inner Peace website. So Lesson 355 is where we're at, and this is what it is. There is no end to all the peace and joy. And all the miracles that I will give. When I accept God's word, why not today? There is no end to all the peace and joy. And all the miracles that I will give. When I accept God's word, why not today? Why should I wait, my father, for the joy you promised me? For you will keep your word you gave your son in exile. I am sure my treasure waits for me. And I need but reach out my hand to find it. Even now my fingers touch it. It is very close. I need not wait an instant more to be at peace forever. It is you I choose. And my identity along with you, your son, would be himself and know you 
as his father and creator and his love. There is no end to all the peace and joy and all the miracles that I will give when I accept God's word. Why not today? Why not today? It's pretty cool, right? I love that. <coughs> All right. Um, well, that's it uh, for right now. I'm going to take a quick break. And when I come back, we're going to go over 18, if not more. We'll see what, how much we could get through. 18 different essential oils. I'm going to give you all the different ways that you can uh, utilize essential oils, which is aromatherapy, to alleviate anxiety as well as kill germs, by the way. So I'm going to go over that in just a few moments right after these two short messages. So I'll be back right after this. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's high time you did. It is the absolute easiest way to make a podcast. First of all, it's absolutely free. Second of all, they have creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. You guys have known that I've been doing this for eight months using the Anchor.fm app right on my cell phone, and I have done it everywhere, right? I have recorded this in my living room, my bedroom, little cafes in Quito, Ecuador, all over Cuenca. It's so absolutely easy to make your podcast and editing is just a snap. Anchor also will distribute your podcast for you. And it took me about two and a half months to become syndicated. And now I'm available on Spotify, Apple podcast, and many more and so can you you can make money from your podcast also and there's no minimum requirement you get paid from your very first listener it is everything that you need to make a podcast all in one place so please if you are interested in making a podcast of your very own do not hesitate to start with anchor Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today. Happy August, guys. I wanted to extend to you my birthday special. I was born this month and I wanted to do something for you guys. Normally, my readings are $111 for a tarot reading or a psychic mediumship reading. That means I can basically help you talk to any of your deceased loved ones, your higher self, even God himself, or any of the ascended masters that you've always wanted to have a conversation with. What you need to do is just contact me at mermaidgirl888 on Instagram. Just direct message me and let me know you're interested in having the birthday special $88 reading. That is $33 less than my normal price. And as always, my cloud readings are also available at $33. So there you have it. Happy August. I look forward to hearing from you. All right, guys. Um, During the break, I went back and listened to my introduction. And one thing I forgot to mention, which is like kind of a minor thing, but hilarious, is when I'm climbing up and down these ladders... 12 feet up off the ground. I was wearing heels and a business suit. <laughs> Doing the filing. 
carrying like an armful of uh, vials that were like a foot thick. It was like absolutely dangerous. <laughs> and it was just fun because I, I can only wear flats now since I broke my leg a couple years back. And it's um, funny to think about my life back then wearing business suits and heels and my hair up and looking absolutely professional. I mean, I was dressing like, I don't know, CEO, even assistant to the CEO. But I was like getting paid like the crappiest job. I always dressed for a lot better than what job I got. Crazy, right? Anyway, thank you, God. Those days are behind me. <laughs> no more file clerk jobs for me. But um, yeah, it was just like a weird thought. Like, wow, I remember back in the day when I used to wear heels, and then I started having the heels in my mind that I used to have. I remember every pair of shoes I ever had. Anyway, all right, guys, we're going to jump right into this. I found an article on healthline.com about essential oils, which I already um, went to school for aromatherapy. I'm an aromatologist. I didn't take my final exam because I couldn't find anybody who would just let me sit there and write, you know, sign their name saying that I didn't cheat on the test. That's all I needed. I went to the local library and they refused to, I'm like, well, if I sit at a table right in front of you, and you're going to see that I don't have any books, I'm not going to cheat, and I know the stuff, like the back of my hand, and they said no, and I'm like, well, if I pay you 25 bucks, and they're like, we can't, we can't do that, I'm like, you're just being me, I asked a whole bunch of people, and they all said no, and I'm like, I never got my aromatherapy degree, because I couldn't find anyone to help me sit the test. Crazy, right? Anyway, but as far as I'm concerned, I I have an aromatherapy degree. It's just not official on paper, but I am an aromatherapist, and I've been using essential oils for, oh my God, 25 years now. 25 years. But there's a few things you need to know about essential oils before we jump right into the 18 top essential oils that will help alleviate your stress and your anxiety and here it goes all right um you have to make sure you buy from a reputable source make sure that there's no fillers or that's not a bunch of like you know sweet almond oil with a couple of drops of essential oil pure essential oils are always better you have to be very 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 cautious with them they are more potent than taking herbs, and if you take herbs of any kind, no matter what it is, it's never a good idea to take the same thing every day for more than three weeks at a time. Usually I recommend one week on and one week off with anything like that. You want it to continue to be effective, and if your body gets used to it, then it might not be as effective. Also, certain things can lead to health issues if you take them too often. So, um, for example, um, some, some herbs, when you take them for one week, will help you in the short term. But if you take them for like a year, you might end up with kidney failure. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to give you an example of what does that, but I want to focus on that. But it's possible to really, really hurt yourself with herbs. And aromatherapy, like essential oils, are stronger. So, like, for example, if you were going to make rose petal tea, you're going to take, you know, six or seven or eight rose petals and, you know, pour the hot water over it and steep it, and you've got this rose petal tea. Roses are amazing. They can, they're really good for you. They have vitamin C, bioflavonoids, they have different minerals and whatnot, and they will help you feel stress-free. They give you rose-flavored breath, even. They're not bad for you at all. They're from edible flowers, but, you know, it's just a few, a few petals, right? That's one thing, but if you take one drop, a teeny tiny drop of essential oil of rose from rose petals, did you know it takes 4,000 petals to produce one drop of essential oil. So if you contemplate that, you're going to understand quickly that essential 
essential oils can be very, very dangerous if you use them out of context, which is something my son and I learned today because we didn't realize that the Ling Ling had spilled everywhere. We were both still thinking for like two hours, we were thinking, God, damn, that's some strong incense because we smelled it as soon as we opened the Buddha Power Store box, which had nothing to do with that. But the uh, Lang Lang had spilled all over the inside of a Ziploc bag that was in a greater, bigger bag, and I think it had spilled out of the Ziploc bag. It was all over everything, and I didn't notice it because I had sprayed everything with um, uh, rubbing alcohol because the coronavirus told him to be safe. We couldn't smell anything but for the stupid rubbing alcohol. And then as soon as that was over, I was like, oh, I like that incense. <laughs> and by that time, it had already soaked in. We both had it on our hands. It had soaked into my palms, my hands. I mean, like 12 hours later, they still smell like Lang Lang. And I've washed my hands like eight times today with soap, hot water. And, and it's just, it once it soaks in, it soaks in. I can't use any essential oils until this is out of my system. And um, I don't know about Lang Lang, but some essential oils can cause liver damage, kidney damage, brain damage. Um, essential oil of anise, you know, the black licorice flavor, um, it can alleviate that, um, asthma. In 10 minutes, you could get rid of asthma attack, you know, but if you take it every day for more than two weeks, you can suppress your central nervous system and put yourself into a coma and it can kill you and also taking too too much of it will give you diarrhea and you'll be in the bathroom all day long I, I told a friend about it and I said don't ever take more than three drops and he said oh what does she know it's just little it's just whatever and he took like ten drops while he was on an Amtrak plane train <laughs> He says, I barely got off the train. It was like 10 hours on the train. And he was in the bathroom the whole time. He's like, I'm an idiot. I didn't listen to you. I'm like, yeah, I know. He was my, my brother-in-law. God rest his soul. But, <laughs> like I told you, man, don't, don't ever take it for more than a week. And don't ever take more than three drops twice a day. In fact, that might be too much for some people. Essential oils. Most essential oils, one drop is enough. One drop. Because like I said, one drop of rose essential oil, it's 4,000 petals. Produce one drop. That's a lot. It's very, very concentrated. So when I say be cautious with essential oils, guys, I'm not just uh, saying that, you know, for my health. <laughs> I'm saying it for yours. For your health. Alright, so with that caution in mind, um, just be careful. It's not safe for everybody to use essential oils. Certain essential oils like cinnamon, for example, will abort your baby. <laughs> if you're pregnant, this will this can hurt your baby. It can hurt the fetus, right? So you've got to be very, very cautious if you're pregnant. Just step away from the aromatherapy. Just forget it. You don't need it. Wait till after you've given birth. And this anise essential oil will increase your, your breast milk production and it will help alleviate colic in the baby. You know, but only if you take two drops a day. Because it's very highly concentrated in breast milk when you, you know, so even if you're breastfeeding, um, essential oils can be very concentrated into the breast milk and can harm your baby. You don't want to harm your kid, right? So, um, all right, there you go. Uh, so you gotta stay away from certain things, right? When you're pregnant, you can have cinnamon toast. That's not a big deal. But cinnamon essential oil, totally different ballgame. It's stronger than than a lot of medicines. And yet, if you put it in soap and you're a man, you can shave with it, and it's excellent. You know, it kills germs. Most most essential oils do kill germs. So, all right. So these are some cautions I'm bringing up because I want you to be very, very safe. Be very responsible, please. And I'm not responsible for you. You're responsible for you. So, you know, don't blame it on me if you overdose on such oils accidentally, okay? Um, because they could be very dangerous. So, anyway, um, the 
always say, if you want to uh, test an essential oil, most of them are not safe applied meat, N-E-A-T. To apply an essential oil meat is directly from the, from the bottle. You take a drop and drop it on your skin. Most essential oils are unsafe to do that because they're so strong. Um, lavender essential oil is one exception. Usually you have to put it in a carrier oil. I recommend um, coconut oil if you're going to use it for massage or for beauty purposes. It's, um, you can use it for, um, if you're going to do a massage and then take a shower right after, it's okay to use it in olive oil, but olive oil is heavy and greasy, so it's better to use coconut oil. If you want to um, use sweet almond oil, that's pretty practical and um, not as oily. It's a lighter oil, so you have to kind of work with it, see which ones you like better. Sesame oil has too much of a strong um, scent to it that you have to compete, you know, the essential oil itself competes with the scent of the sesame oil, so that's kind of an, a weird one. But unscented coconut oil is excellent, especially since it does not stay oily on your skin, it absorbs quickly, it makes your skin very soft, it's very good for you, and it has minerals in it that will help puff up your skin, make you look younger and more radiant. So. I always recommend coconut oil. It's one of my favorites. I love the scent of coconut oil. But um, it's all individual though. It's like whatever you, you know, apricot um, kernel seed oil is very good. Especially if you want to try to alleviate wrinkles. Wrinkles. I don't know why I can say that right now. But anyway, just be very, very careful. Uh, test what once you find your carrier oil, test it on the inside of your wrist or on your forearm. Wait 24 hours and see if there's a, an allergic reaction, especially if you tend to be an allergic person. You're allergic to things. You have to be careful with um, how you may or may not react, right? So you have to make sure. And once you know that you're not allergic, you're not going to have any kind of issue with it, then you can kind of go a little bit more, um, you know, caution to the wind, <laughs> but always make sure you are cautious. I'm going to tell you how to use essential oils after we go over the oils, okay? But these are the, um, pretty much just make sure, you know, you look for redness or rash or itching. Make sure if you get any of those things within 24 hours, you, know, you put the diluted essential oil on your wrist, you know, dilute it with your favorite oil, cover it with banded, a band-aid or a bandage. And after 24 hours, if you have any itching, redness, anything, then it's not safe for you because you have an allergic reaction. I mean, you don't want to, like, use more over your whole body and then break out hives or something, right? So, here we go. Um, we're going to go to the beginning of this article, and so here we go. The number one that they listed anyway is uh, valerian. And this is weird that they would say valerian because I do not, um, I, I don't know, valerian, if you guys have ever tried valerian tea, valerian root, I happen to love it, but I got used to it, but the first time you smell valerian, you might throw up, <laughs> it tastes like dirty, and smells like dirty old sweat socks, not that I've ever tasted dirty old sweat socks, but I sure has been in a men's locker room, because I used to be, another weird job I used to have, I used to, when I was 15, during the summer, when everyone else was outside of school, my summer job was to clean as a janitor while breaking school. One of the first uh, tasks I had to complete was to clean the boys' locker room. some old, dirty, sweaty gym socks in lockers that the guys had left behind. Oh my god. So, believe you me when I tell you, the Larry Root smells just like that. Oh my god, it's disgusting. <laughs> you do not have to go with the first one you hear about. You don't have to go with it because it's cheaper. I mean, it's spring for the, you know, $13 oil instead of the $8 oil in case you just make sure you like the the scent of it, 
because you've got to love the smell of it in addition to what it can bring and offer you, you know, what it brings to the table of your health is just as important as the smell and the way it makes you feel. So valerian essential oil, I've never even smelled it. I don't think I'd ever want to after drinking valerian green tea, which helps um, alleviate asthma, helps take out stress and anxiety, helps you sleep, gives you incredible dreams. sleep calms nerves has a mild sedative effect on the body so they say add a few drops of a valerian essential oil to an aromatherapy diffuser yeah if you want your house smelling dirty sweats off i don't know i wouldn't i i would have to say no <laughs> but if you want if you're if you like the scent you're used to you could try it and it might smell different than the actual uh, herb itself but This, there's this one I've never heard before. Jatamansi or Hatamansi. J-A-T-A-M-A-N-S-I. This is new to me. I don't know this one. But they do say it's the same plant family as malaria. And it's an Ayurvedic medicine. Calms your mind and encourages sleep. And a, you know, this is a really stupid study they conducted on mice in 2008. It says that on mice it relieved a depression. I'm sorry, how did you know the mice were depressed? I mean, really though? That's so strange. Anyway, they did say that it decreased GABA neurotransmitters and MAO receptors in the brain. So, there's something to know about MAO inhibitors. You can't eat cheese. It can cause a death if you're on MAO inhibitors. So, I would have to say if you are using Jatamansi every day for a week or two or three. Uh, definitely do not eat, eat dairy, um, well, dairy if you eat, but don't eat cheese. St. John's wort is a very famous MAO inhibitor. Most people don't know that about it. It's a very famous herb that people use for depression. They take it in capsules, they drink it in tea. People that have had wonderful success with alleviating their stress and anxiety and depression. We say John's work is a pretty yellow flower. It's a very happy, gorgeous flower. I used to have a whole yard full of it when I lived in Northern California. But to be honest with you, um, it's an MAO inhibitor, so I steered clear of it. I went towards other things. I could still eat a grilled cheese sandwich and not be depressed with other things. So why put yourself at harm's way or at risk, right? So just be careful with these things. So, John Monsey oil, I have no idea what it smells like. I've never heard of it. They say if you want to use it, um, rub it on your temples or your forehead after you've diluted it in another oil. So I don't know about that one so much. Lavender is a gorgeous, oh, it's one of the best smells to me anyway. It's one of the most popular aromatherapy ones because of the way it smells. It's got a very fresh green top note, and then as it dissipates, it starts to go into more of a floral, um, gentle floral scent. And it, you know, first it's like strong, but at the end, right before you no longer have the, the scent any longer, it's very gentle and um, relaxing smell. This is why they use the lavender essential oil in products for babies, especially babies that are colicky and can't sleep very well, you, you put it in the bubble bath, just, you know, don't, I would not use lavender essential oil directly with a baby, but you could put, um, especially if you have a newborn, there is, a uh, Johnson Johnson has an excellent lavender bath, um, a bubble bath for babies, it's very safe, and I use this with my own children, and if you don't want to use a commercial product like that, if you live in the United States especially, I would recommend the 
lavender scented. Um, it is it is scented with the essential oils of lavender. Or might be a cold pressed infusion. It might not be directly an essential oil, but Dr. Bronner's has he has, he has they have one for babies, but they also have a lavender one. And I still use a lavender one with my babies when they had a hard time sleeping when they were very little. My young my oldest baby is sleep and they have lovely dreams and it was it's a very gentle essential oil so okay um, let's see where we're at um it does calm the anxiety lavender calms anxiety by impacting the limbic system and this is the part of the brain that controls emotions that's why it relaxes it kind of relaxes you on every level spiritually and mentally and um, physically With lavender. So, um, they're saying have a nice, relaxing lavender bath, like I just said. I didn't say this until right now. And if you're an adult, you could put like three drops of lavender essential oil, put it in a carrier oil, and then put that in your uh, bath or the, or put in an unscented bath gel. Stir the mixture into your warm bath water and just enter it into the bath and just sit there and inhale it until um, until you're relaxed. And I always like, you know, with, with something like this, I like to get a lot more new agey with it. I mean, if you have, if you could get purple flowers, put, put those in the room. Um, if you have sprigs of lavender, that'd be amazing. If not, even amaryllis, any kind of flower that's beautiful to look at, calming, Jasmine, oh my god, Jasmine is one of the most incredibly beautiful scents in the world. One of my favorites. Jasmine oil is, it's heady, very heady. And it, it's, um, it's transport, transportative, if that's a word. It is now. I just said it. <laughs> I just created it. It transports you to a different time and place. And it just, Jasmine is an incredible scent. Again, no more than three drops ever. Um, according to a 2013 study, inhaling jasmine or essential oil promotes a sense of well-being and romance. And unlike other uh, essential oils that you can use for anxiety, jasmine will calm your nervous system without making you sleepy. Now, a lavender, by the way, if you need to sleep and your body needs to relax and sleep, lavender will help you to sleep. However, if you need to wake up, lavender will wake you up as well. Uh, peppermint is the only other essential oil I know of that will either wake you up or put you to sleep depending on uh, what your body needs at the moment. So it's very flexible with the needs of your physical body, which is pretty nice. It's a pretty cool feature if you ask me. So, okay, um, let's see, gotta step it up a little, I'm only on five, okay, uh, they're saying, according to health, the article on healthline.com, inhaling jasmine oil directly from the bottle or allowing the scent to fill the room through a diffuser, I would say, this is one of my favorite things to do, if you could get a little tiny bottle, like a glass bottle with a plastic lid, 
when there's like a hard plastic lid, you could put a little um, cotton ball in a little tiny bottle and just put a few drops of jasmine scented oil or even lavender too and you just keep that in your purse or your backpack and or even in your car in your glove box anytime you feel stressed you could uh, just stop st you know, pull to the side of the road if you're driving and just open that and just smell it for a couple of um, like a minute or so and then put the lid back on put it back and just have it anytime you need. Instead of taking anti-anxiety pills or something that might be harsher for your system, it's one of the ways that I absolutely recommend just to inhale that beautiful scent. Now, if it's like lavender essential oil, even jasmine, you can do this. You could put one drop in the center of the, like, the palm of your hand and then rub your hands together really vigorously and then hold your hands over your face and inhala, exhala, inhale, exhale. Just, you know, just kind of really deep breathe that in and that will really calm you down and help your limbic system, your nervous system to calm down. So, um, holy basil, Batman, no, I'm just kidding. Holy basil, also called Tulsi. It's not the kind of basil that you will make lasagna with. It's from the same family, but it smells a little bit different. It's a spicy, minty aroma, and it has eugenols in it. And according to uh, research done in 19, I mean 1914, oh my goodness, 2014, sorry about that. Holy basil is an adaptogenic herb that will help treat mental and physical stress. So that's excellent. Yeah. Um, a little goes a long way. They say add a few drops. I think with holy basil, I would say no more than two to three drops. And you can use this in an essential oil diffuser, the kind that plugs into the wall. Or you can, there's a little Roomba vacuum now. It's not a Roomba, it's a different one you could get on Wish. It's an electronic or robot vacuum that actually will diffuse essential oils as it vacuums your floor. It's like, oh my God, relieves two things, two, two, two kinds of stress in one. <laughs> it cleans for you and relieves your stress through essential oils. But also you can have one of those um, uh, candle or votive aromatherapy diffusers. Having a candle lit in the room is very gentle. It's very magical. You light that under, um, you put a little bit of water in the dish, you put one or two drops of essential oil in the water and it diffuses it slowly as it boils out that's another wonderful way to do that so sweet basil a holy basil and also sweet basil is um it's the same you know sweet basil is what you use to make um italian food if you're ever out of it but you have sweet basil essential oil you could just pop one or two drops in a big big pan of spaghetti sauce i have done that I've done that with oregano oil, only one drop of that, one drop of thyme, and two drops of rosemary, two to three drops of uh, sweet basil oil, and it, oh my gosh, it makes amazing spaghetti sauce. It's not as good as if you have the real herbs, but it's uh, good in a pinch if you have happen to have aromatherapy on hand. According to a 2015 study, um, on mice, again on mice, oh my god. The phenol compounds that are in sweet basil oil did relieve anxiety in the mice. How do they know, again, that the mice have anxiety? It's really creepy. I mean, do, do they take, you know, do they talk to their psychotherapist about it? I, I just hate when they do experiments on mice. Poor little bastards. <laughs> the compounds were found to be less sedating than diazepam. Well, yeah, obviously, diazepam is hella sedating. God, you need to do that on mice to know that. Stupid. Anyway, <laughs> see, uh, I'm going judgmental again. All right, um, they say inhale through an inhaler tube. What the hell is an inhaler tube? No, screw that. I would put that in a diffuser. Basil smells amazing. To make your whole house smell like sweet basil is to just be in love with all Italian food, period. 
bergamot. Bergamot is an excellent essential oil. I highly recommend bergamot for not only for alleviating stress and improving your mood and uplifting you in every possible way, Bergamot is also used in magic ritual. As a witch, I do know a lot about bergamot. If you put bergamot essential oil on all of your money, it will bring money back to you. It's like money luck and it brings wealth and abundance to you. So hey, alleviate stress and get wealthy. <laughs> so they say bergamot oil of course comes from the bergamot oranges and they're kind of it, it, their oil itself is beautiful it's like a, a, a almost like a peridot green it's a very beautiful green scented oil um, with that citrusy scent it is invigorating it is according to they say a 2015 study both animal and human trials have found that bergamot relieves anxiety and improves your mood and when used topically it can increase your sun sensitivity so do not ever put it on your skin and go sit in the sun but if it's in the winter time and you're feeling sad and you have sad seasonal affective disorder or SAD this is what I recommend bergamot in coconut essential oil I mean coconut oil and with the bergamot essential oil mixed in if you even want to put a drop of lemon or sweet orange or grapefruit and then just rub that in your skin you are gonna feel so amazing it really lifts you up when you're feeling down um, they say to put it in a, on a cotton ball or handkerchief to inhale the aroma two to three times to relieve anxiety, just two to three deep fat breaths. I agree with that, but I love mixing the bergamot with it, with this with coconut oil. Because the coconut and the bergamot is just very tropical. It's very exotic and I love the those scents together. Chamomile, and by the way, bergamot, they do if you want to do this the easy, cheap way, go get yourself some Earl Grey tea. Earl Grey tea, that weird uh, flavor of Earl Grey, it's bergamot, baby. Just go get a cup of Earl Grey. Super, super easy. And so for under $3, you can alleviate um, anxiety just with Earl Grey tea. Now, chamomile is another tea. You could just use it instead of essential oil. Um, you could just do chamomile tea. It has a lot of minerals that alleviate stress in it. But what they say here in this article, chamomile is well known for relaxing and sedating um, you and it has an intoxicating scent. It's very gentle. It's a very gentle herb. And chamomile essential oil just, it almost smells like soft scented apples to me anyway. It's a gentle, beautiful scent that they also, again, use in baby shampoo, baby formulas, the bubble bath at nighttime, Johnson & Johnson, chamomile. That's the other one I used with my kids when they were babies. We would sometimes use lavender and sometimes we'd use a chamomile one. And I believe there might also be chamomile soap in health food stores, possibly Bronner's, Dr. Bronner's might have. I don't think they have a chamomile one, but they might have like a bar soap instead of the Castile liquid soap. So they do have the Castile liquid soap with lavender though. Um, chamomile is highly recommended. Um, generalized anxiety disorder has been proven to be alleviated with chamomile supplements. And they say there's not a lot of research on chamomile essential oil for anxiety. But I do know it is a mood uplifter. And when I was in school 20 years ago, they did say that. So, you know, this person just doesn't know the studies that I do know. But rose essential oil is another one. Oh, roses are amazing. If you have the wrong kind of skin chemistry, it can make you, like, you put on your skin directly. It might make you help. It might make you smell like pee. Rose essential oil is really strange, especially rose perfume or rose oil of any kind. Can make you smell 
weird, like bad BO, or, I mean, for me, that's what it does to me, it's horrible, but how I use rose essential oil, guys, I will put it in a diffuser, I won't put it in my bath, because against my skin, it makes a weird scent, and everybody's different, right, so maybe it's perfect for you, so you can put it in, um, like, a, a cup, like a, a coffee cup, you know, two or three drops of essential oil of rose, pour hot, hot, hot water on top of it, and you could just breathe it in, or just let it, you know, or you could boil water on the stove, just put a couple drops, and don't let it boil all the way out, but it will put that scent throughout your whole house. You can also put one or two drops of rose essential oil on three different cotton balls, or four different cotton balls, put it in the corners of any room and that will just raise the vibration of your place. Rose essential oil has a 4,000 hertz frequency. It's absolutely off the freaking charts. It almost is like from a different dimension. It is very intense spiritually as well as mentally and also physically. It has a you know, emotional components and it's a very romantic scent as well. And it, if you mix it with sweet orange and lang lang, um, it makes a really nice aphrodisiac bath to take alone or with a lover. It's a wonderful three, my, my triple threat combination. I love it. Okay, so um, uh, let's see. Um, Rose aromatherapy foot baths can help alleviate anxiety in pregnant women. They say. That this, and especially if you're in labor, it is very gentle, and you can use it if you are in labor. You can put, um, I would say, two to three drops in, a, you know, as hot a water as you can stand, put your feet in. I mean, I know when I was in labor both times, I don't think I could have, I could have hung out with my feet in water. I was in so much pain, I couldn't, I couldn't take it. But it, it is a good scent when you enter in labor. It does reduce anxiety in you if you're pregnant, but don't, again, don't ever use too much essential oil. Just one drop in um, on a cotton ball, and again, put that in a little glass jar and just smell it when you need anxiety relief, and it will uplift your mood as well. Vetiver is a lovely scent. It's very green. Um, vetiver, V-E-T-I-V-E-R, and it is less known. Um, it's not as popular, but I like vetiver. It's very interesting. It is a grassy plant native to India. It has a sweet, earthy scent. And it can be a little bit of an aphrodisiac also. In a 2015 study, again, on rats, I don't know why this article keeps saying that, it is used for relaxation. <laughs> so because your rats need to be relaxed, right? Anyway, um, it, it does have anti-anxiety abilities similar to diazepam. So if you, I, this none of this can really take place of your medicine if you're having some serious issues. Stick with the medicine, supplement with aromatherapy, and eventually maybe you can get off the medicine with the help of your doctor. Don't ever go off your medicine without consulting um, your physician, but just let them know, hey, I want to try the alternative route. Also, consult with a naturopath and possibly an acupuncturist, like an acupuncture doctor, um, because they will have more knowledge in this, in your specific case with your set of circumstances and health issues. So, um, like, by the way, my advice here is not to ever take place of medical advice, and I'm not responsible for anything that you do to your body <laughs> based on what I'm telling you. So be very responsible, please take care of yourself. Okay. Um, you can uh, dilute the vetiver oil and then put it in a diffuser. You could mix it, I would say, with um, uh, lemongrass would be a lovely combination. And you can put that in like a massage oil and massage yourself. Um, like on your, you massage your neck, massage your feet even massage your hands, it can help um, alleviate a lot of stress. Lang Lang, here we go again, oh my god, 
the Lang Lang already. I love Lang Lang. Lang Lang mixes really nice with jasmine. It also mixes nice with um, sweet orange oil. It can it can mix with uh, rose essential oil and um, some citruses mix nice with it. Lang Lang and vanilla is particularly sexy. I love it. It's sexy and soft and feminine and beautiful. But this is what it has to say about Lang Lang. This article here on healthline.org. Um, obviously, it promotes relaxation. It can lower your blood pressure, too, by the way. It can stop your anxiety levels in their tracks, just lowering them right down. It lowers your stress as well. And you can mix it with Lang Lang, uh, Lavender, and Bergamot together. Can also That's what they're recommending. Um, I don't know if I like that as much, but you might want to try it. Why not? I like Lang Lang with Sweet Orange because that just lifts your mood. Any citrus, like grapefruit, um, orange, even lemon can just really lift you big, big time up, up, up in, in a happy way. But Bergamot and Lang Lang is a good combination. Possibly with lavender. But it does lower your stress and it does lower your blood pressure and your heart rate. <laughs> and also can lower the serum cortisol, which is the stress hormone. Ladies, you know what I'm talking about. If you have a little bit of a tap, you might have too much cortisol. Lang Lang is lovely. But again, don't ever use it for more than one or two weeks. Then take one or two weeks off. So if you use it for two weeks, just forget about it. Forget about it for two weeks. And then you can start out up again. And only a couple drops per day, okay? Um, you can put diluted Lang Lang on your skin. It, I mean, look, I told you guys, I got it all over my hands, all over the palm of my hands, before I knew what had happened. All day I felt high as fuck. <laughs> this stuff is crazy. It's like, it's almost like microdosing on acid. So be very careful with Lang Lang. But um, it, it, does, it didn't hurt my skin at all. In fact, my skin feels very soft. And still, right now, 12 and a half hours later, smells on me. <laughs> um, all right, the next one here that they're mentioning is frankincense. I love frankincense. This was a gift of the Magi to Jesus in the manger when he was a baby. I don't think they gave him essential oil, but they did give frankincense proper. And it's made from the resin of the Mazuelia tree. It's a musky sweet aroma thought to ease your anxiety. It definitely alleviates anxiety. Also raises your vibration. Also helps you get in touch with your higher self and God and the Holy Spiritual Masters. Um, Ascended Masters, if you want to contact Jesus or pray and meditate, say, hey, Brother Yeshua, um, you know, I have this scent that's going to help me raise my vibration. It's a very high vibration plant, and it will definitely help you to concentrate more on the higher, loftier, more spiritual things. And by the way, all the spiritual advice and witchy advice I give during this article has nothing to do with the article. This is my own personal advice and my experience with these things. So according to a 2008 study in aromatherapy, hand massage using frankincense, lavender, and bergamot did improve anxiety, depression, and pain in people that had terminal cancer. I, I think that's an excellent idea. You don't even have to have terminal cancer. Just everybody rub your feet with this. Again, that's frankincense, lavender, and bergamot. I would say put a carrier oil, uh, such as sweet almond, would be excellent. Um, don't ever, by the way, ever, ever, ever use baby oil for any of these things. It will leach all the minerals directly out of your skin and make your skin very ashy and very dry. It's terrible. Just if you have baby oil in your house, you can use it to lubricate your your bicycle. <laughs> it's good for lubricating machinery. Don't don't ever put it on your actual skin. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, I would say frankincense is excellent for your feet and hands. You can put this in a little roll-on with some um, with a little bit of oil and just use that as your hand sanitizer. It does kill germs. I don't know if it kills viruses, but I do know it kills microbes of all kinds. Clary sage. Oh, what a 
beautiful sentences. It's different from what you imagine such a well to be. It's a very unique scent. It is woody and herbal and very green. And they say it's, um, yeah, it's not like sage at all. Clary sage is different than normal sage, okay, that you like cook with, okay. Uh, it's calming and it is also an aphrodisiac. I mean, clary sage has a lang lang and a little bit of, um, I would say vanilla, <laughs> but that's it. It's a lovely aphrodisiac. By the way, tea tree from New Zealand is an aphrodisiac, whereas tea tree from Australia is not. Huh, go figure. Who knew? Okay, um, clary sage can ease your tension, help your cortisol levels to be lowered in women. And that's, of course, a stress hormone. And it lowers your um, anxiety and depression by lowering your high cortisol levels. If you inhale it directly, when you feel anxious, this will help you put on a cotton ball. Like we talked about before, you could, you could put it in um, put, put it in like a tablespoon of, of uh, vodka, one or two drops, and then put that in a bigger uh, spray bottle like, uh, I would say, um, uh, like high quality water, not tap water, nothing that will go bad and spray your pillow with, with it at night. That will help alleviate a lot of stress. Uh, patchouli, and that's my idea, not the article's idea, by the way, I'm throwing more than my two cents worth into this. Musky patchouli is used in Ayurvedic medicine to alleviate stress, anxiety, and depression. It's often combined with other essential oils such as lavender. Patchouli is thought to promote calmness and relaxation. And they say, but most of the evidence is anecdotal. Patchouli is one of those um, herbs or essential oils or incense that will help you um, meditate better, helps you to focus and concentrate. And if you can use that focus and concentration to concentrate on meditation, then it's going to lower your anxiety and stress and even depression. But um, there's other things that are more effective, but I think patchouli is very good for meditation. Um, and that's how it alleviates uh, anxiety. They're saying you could put it in a bath water or a room diffuser, of course. Any of these methods, by the way, with any of the oils will work. They're just mentioning different ones for different ones to sound like family, but you could is your favorite way do that geranium oil oh geraniums are such a clean beautiful floral scent and um it, according to a study in 2015 on women in the first stage of labor when you inhale geranium oil this will reduce your anxiety geranium oil is very good for your skin um rose essential oil mixed with geranium oil mixed in sweet almond oil and if you're pregnant you rub it on the um, well for lack of a better word the taint okay perineum area and the whole vaginal area it will prevent stretch marks and things and tearing for when you do go into labor sorry guys i had to say that out loud because someone will need to hear this i should have that, that that little blurb should have come with a warning sorry about that oil to cotton ball and, and um, hold it under your nose a few times. You could do that when you're in, in labor as well. It will help to um, help you uh, help you ease your mind as you're going into labor. Plus it's a beautiful scent. Um, this will also decrease your diastolic blood pressure. Uh, the next one is lemon balm. different than actual lemons, okay? Lemon balm has an uplifting aroma. It's, it's so beautiful. It's very fresh, very clean smelling. Honestly, I would say mixing it with bergamot might be a nice scent. It is restorative and soothing. And basically, you can inhale lemon balm for anxiety. Again, you can just put a couple drops in a diffuser. You can put it on a cotton ball. You can put it on your hands uh, mixed with uh, carrier oil and just inhale it. You could just put it in a, in a bottom of a coffee cup or hot water and then just inhale that. Or even in a bath would work as well. Um, they say if you take lemon balm capsules, and that's not of essential oil, by the way, that's of the herb itself, can help people with mild and moderate anxiety disorders. And it also will help you to improve your sleep so you could put that in the spray bottle like I mentioned earlier 
And if you want to get really, really cagey and fancy with it, you could put um, uh, like crystals in in, in, in the bottle, <laughs> and that will really, really uh, raise the vibration of it. Especially if you put your intention in it. Also, with any of these things, if you do a screen model, go ahead and write on a piece of tape and, and tape over. things like gentleness, calmness, happiness, love, joy. You put these words on a piece of tape, put that over the bottle, the energy goes directly into what's inside the bottle. You know, it's just your, by your words, it is made so, and by your energy, thoughts, it also is made so. Balm of your feet is a great way. You'll rub it into your feet, massage um, all of your acupressure points with it. Fennel is very strange scent. It's like a green, crispy anise, almost like a black licorice mixed with a fern smell. It's a strange smell, but it's good. It's it's very interesting. Do not mix with margarine. They'd be the they'd be weird together. But fennel can work. Um, well on its own, but you could experiment with, you know, if you want, why not, but it is best known as a cooking spice, as I say, fennel is actually good for asthma, if you eat the plant itself, you put it fresh in a salad, but don't ever use it with a heavy dressing, like a light um, olive oil kind of dressing, um, this is very strong, in fact, you can make an olive oil mixed with fennel as a dressing, it'd be interesting, but, um, and 
make it like an, an exotic salad with like walnuts or something. But um, fennel is really um, kind of a cheerful scent. It kind of gives you happiness. Unless you don't like black licorice, then it's then forget about it. But fennel um, is uh, they okay? They say it has anise aroma, as I just said. It does. <laughs> It, it treats many anxiety side effects, such as digestive problems. Okay, fennel can, it, 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 if you have too much of it, it can cause digestive issues, but even though they say it's good for your digestion, it is, but I would be cautious with it. Just, I've had issues with it, so just in case, be careful. Um, but I like the scent, I like the scent of it, I like the flavor of the green fresh it can help alleviate anxiety, especially when it's related to menopause and other conditions of aging. So, uh, in a 2017 study, fennel supplements helped menopause side effects such as anxiety and hot flashes, as well as sleeping problems and depression. It, it really is a very cheerful plant. I love it. It is even just happy if you grew it. beautiful, cheerful plant, but it's just the energy of it is a lovely, it's very spiritual, but in a gentle and happy-go-lucky way. It is unclear if inhaling fennel will have any effects, but it might be worth a try. Okay, sure, why not? They say you can add it to a warm bath. I agree. If you like black licorice scent, if you don't like anise, then again, forget about it. So there you have it, guys. That's pretty much it. I was going to give you the ways to use this at the end, but I did it all the way throughout. Why not? It ended up working out better that way. Well, that's it. Thank you guys for being on the Ascension journey with me and for your continued faith and confidence and your listenership in my show. I really appreciate having you here. And I can't have a show without listeners, and that's why you are so important to me. So thank you so much for being here. So that's it for tonight. I will be back tomorrow with all unique and original programming, just like always. And as you know, tomorrow's Friday. It went so fast this week. But Friday is when we listen to the Earth Changers reports so that we can know who to pray for around the world. Basically, our brothers and sisters, you know, in spirit. And we get into the fun, cool, weird news. <laughs> the, the last week was a doozy. If you haven't listened, go back and listen to it because it was hilarious in the end. Anyway, that's it. I've got to go to bed. I'm signing off with peace and joy and the high vibes of the Holy Fifth Dimension. Till next time, guys. Peace. <laughs>